for the final part of this chapter, we have to talk about something quite serious, which is known as antibiotic resistance in bacteria. So what exactly is antibiotic resistance? You see, for example, I'm showing you two bacteria. One is bacterium A and one is bacterium B. Now imagine these bacteria are both causing infection in the person. And what we do is we give a particular type of antibiotic and the name of the antibiotic is ampicillin. I don't need you to memorize the name of the antibiotic. Okay, don't worry. So when ampicillin is given, it affects bacterium A and bacterium A dies off. But here's the weird thing. Bacterium B still remains unaffected. So A is said to be sensitive to ampicillin because it's able to be easily affected by ampicillin, but bacterium B is said to be resistant to ampicillin. Therefore, bacterium B is antibiotic resistant. So antibiotic resistance means that the bacteria are unaffected by antibiotics that would normally kill or prevent its growth. So here's where we are talking about something quite interesting here. Antibiotics are normally supposed to be able to kill bacteria or prevent them from growing, but some bacteria have developed this um, ability or this superpower that makes them unaffected by the very thing that is supposed to kill them. So, of course, then we would like to ask the question, uh, how can a bacterium become antibiotic resistant? Now, I do not need you to memorize the situation, but this is my favorite way of teaching antibiotic resistance. So I hope it makes sense, but if it doesn't, ugh, okay, <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, so let's 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 hope you. I, I would like to see in the comment section if you understand this part, this next part, okay? When I explain antibiotic resistance, uh, because it's my favorite way of teaching it. So. Imagine for a second, okay, this is a situation, I don't need you to memorize this. Now, I'm showing you a bacterium here, and in the cytoplasm of the bacterium, I am drawing out this circular DNA, and in the circular DNA, I've highlighted out a particular gene, and this gene codes for an enzyme. I don't need you to memorize this, okay? We are not talking about the resistance part yet. It's just to, you know, set the tone, if you may. So the gene undergoes transcription to produce the mRNA and the mRNA goes to the ribosome and the process of translation happens and thus the ribosome will synthesize a particular protein, which is in this case the enzyme. That is how the gene codes for the enzyme. Notice the shape of the enzyme, okay, the, the, that triangular bit at the top, okay, that, that kind of triangular groove that is known as the active site, and the square groove over there is known as the allosteric site. I did talk about this in chapter 3 when we were covering enzyme inhibitors. So, this enzyme, as an example, it catalyzes ATP formation in the bacteria. So, is this enzyme important for the bacteria? Yes, because the substrate will bind to the enzyme and then ATP is formed, Okay, just a simple example, and because the bacteria, the bacterium is able to produce ATP, the bacterium is surviving. It's just doing its normal job. Now, let's say I wanted to kill this particular bacterium. If I wanted to kill this bacterium, I would give it antibiotics. Now, so the antibiotic enters the bacterium, and look at the shape of the antibiotic, like a square shape. It is able to non-competitively inhibit the enzyme by binding to the allosteric site. And because it binds to the allosteric site, the 3D shape of the enzyme sh changes and the substrate is no longer able to bind to the active site. The bacteria no longer has ATP and therefore the bacterium dies. So the bacterium is not resistant. It is sensitive to the antibiotic. So this is one way in which certain specific antibiotics can kill bacteria. They will inhibit important enzymes in the bacteria, the bacteria cannot carry out those important chemical reactions, and thus the bacteria die. Now, imagine for a second that another bacterium, still alive, okay, this bacterium is alive, but that gene underwent a particular mutation. Remember, mutation of the gene means a random change in the base sequence of the gene. So if the base sequence of the gene changes, the codons on the mRNA 
will change as well. And if the codons on the mRNA changes during translation, maybe the protein structure will also change as evidenced here. Look at the shape of the enzyme, the change in 3D structure. The active site still looks the same, but the allosteric site looks different here, right? So, and of course, the enzyme, the substrate is able to bind to the active site and produce ATP. Now, if I wanted to kill this, this particular bacterium that has undergone gene mutation, I give the same type of antibiotics. But will the antibiotics be able to bind to the allosteric site? No, because the shape of the allosteric site has changed. So in this case, the antibiotic cannot inhibit the enzyme. The bacteria's enzyme can still carry out the chemical reaction, and the bacteria survives in this case. So the bacteria is said to be resistant to the antibiotics. To put it into simple terms, how a bacterium can become antibiotic resistant is by, number one, acquiring an antibiotic resistant gene through mutation. So that particular gene that has undergone mutation is now referred to as an antibiotic resistant gene. The interesting thing about antibiotic resistant genes is they usually form due to mutation that is quite random, right? So Another way in which a bacterium can also become antibiotic resistant is by plasmid transfers. Remember, in chapter 1, I did tell you that bacteria have this small little circular DNA known as plasmids. Uh, they are optional structures. Not all bacteria have them, by the way. Now, imagine the bacterium. It has a plasmid, and in the plasmid, it contains a particular antibiotic resistant gene. So, that gene makes the bacteria antibiotic resistant. But the bacteria species Y do not have the resistant gene at all. So species X is antibiotic resistant, species Y bacterium is antibiotic sensitive. Here's the interesting thing. Between the two different species of bacteria, what will actually happen is a process known as conjugation may take place. You don't have to memorize that in detail. Conjugation is what happens when the bacterium species X will copy its plasmid. So you can see two plasmids over there right now and transfer one of the plasmid to the other bacterium. The interesting thing about this is it can happen between different species of bacteria. So what's the consequence when this takes place? You see, earlier species X bacterium was antibiotic resistant and species Y bacterium was antibiotic sensitive. But because species Y have now received that particular plasmid, which contains the antibiotic resistant gene, species Y is now also antibiotic resistant. So plasmid transfer is quite an interesting thing where antibiotic resistant genes in the plasmid of one bacterium can be transferred to another bacterium, making it resistant too. So these are the two main ways in which a single bacterium can become antibiotic resistant, either through the random act of mutation or also plasmid transfers. So earlier we were just talking about how a single bacterium might become resistant. But the next important thing is to talk about how does an entire population of bacteria become antibiotic resistant. For example, if you see here, there was an antibiotic sensitive bacterium and because of the random mutation that happened, it became resistant. Okay, But if I were to draw out a population of bacteria, which I have represented in black dots, only one bacterium which I've circled over there, that's the bacterium that underwent mutation. right? And when it underwent mutation, only that particular bacterium became resistant. So there is one antibiotic resistant bacterium in a sea of antibiotic sensitive bacteria. Hardly a very dangerous thing that is taking place. My question to you is, how did all of them become resistant? So some students will say, well, all of them particularly mutated and perfectly mutated to become resistant. See, here's the thing. Mutation is not just a thing that, you know, just because bacteria mutate doesn't mean that they will definitely become resistant. No, mutation is a random thing. So not like, for example, just, just out of the top of my head, I'm talking, I'm just talking out of my ass here. Yeah? Um, if, a, if a 
thousand bacteria mutate at the same time, perhaps only one of them become antibiotic resistant. Okay, It's not a thing where everything that mutates will definitely become resistant. It's a random, and if the bacteria bacterium is lucky, it will develop resistance. So how did all of them become resistant? Did all of them mutate? Was there plasmid transfer? Well, maybe, but there is a simpler and easier way to explain this. Now, in an order to explain how an entire population of bacteria can become resistant, what I'm going to do is I'm going to represent antibiotic sensitive bacterium as a black dot and red colored dot is antibiotic resistant bacterium. So notice the population of bacteria in the human body over here, black dots, all sensitive. Now they increase in the human body by binary fission and cause an infection in the person. So, so the person is now sick. Now, when they go to the hospital, the doctor will prescribe them a course of antibiotics. A course of antibiotics basically means you have to take the antibiotics for the next few days. Okay, so the doctor says, take the antibiotics for 10 days. Now, imagine for a second, the patient did not listen to the doctor and the patient only took the antibiotics for three days. You might be thinking, oh my God, why is the patient so stupid? The doctor said 10 days. They should listen to the doctor. Well, maybe after three days, the patient started feeling better. So maybe the patient's like, oh, I don't need to take the antibiotics anymore. So the patient did not finish the entire course of the antibiotics, but even though they became better, not all the bacteria in the body died. And perhaps in this case, the bacteria remained dormant. Dormant meaning to say inactive. During that period, one bacterium may have accidentally mutated and luckily for the bacteria, it developed resistance, right? Now, I would like to remind students, the bacterium did not mutate because of the antibiotics, okay? The bacterium mutated randomly and it so happened that lucky for it, it developed resistance. Now, Remember, that was during the period of dormancy, but when it becomes active again, the population, the bacteria increase in the future, causing another infection. The patient goes back to the hospital and the patient is given another course of antibiotics. But here's the interesting thing. Not all the bacteria will die. The sensitive ones, which are the black ones, will die, but the resistant ones, which are the red ones, will survive because, well, they are resistant, right? So they have an advantage to survive. And those that survive will reproduce. And when they reproduce, they will get a population of resistant bacteria in the patient. And in this case, the patient is in trouble because now there is a population of resistant bacteria causing problems to the patient. No matter how many tablets of those antibiotics the patient takes, the antibiotic is no longer working. So this is a process known as natural selection where using antibiotics increases the chances of resistant bacteria to survive and reproduce. That is irony in an extremely jarring fashion, right? <laughs> you see, you're, you're supposed to use antibiotics to kill bacteria, but the act of using too much antibiotics indiscriminately will cause resistant bacteria population to increase. That is quite scary. To summarize, one bacterium may mutate and become antibiotic resistant because it now has the antibiotic resistant gene, or one bacterium may receive the plasmid containing the antibiotic resistance gene from another bacterium, all right, and thus also becoming antibiotic resistant in the process. This makes one bacterium become antibiotic resistant. But to explain how an entire population of bacteria are resistant, we start off with this population of bacteria where you see one resistant red bacterium in a sea of antibiotic sensitive bacteria. Humans use antibiotics. Most of the sensitive bacteria die and the resistant ones survive and reproduce. Okay, so in this case, they survive. But now you see there are some black ones, there are some red ones. That's still fine. So the patient, the humans use antibiotics again, but this time the black ones die off and the red ones still continue surviving and reproducing. And when they reproduce, 
they will pass down the gene to the next generation and all the bacteria in the future generation are now antibiotic resistant. So this is how a population of bacteria become resistant through natural selection. So if a question asks you, how does one bacterium become resistant? You can just say it mutated and now has an antibiotic resistant gene or it received a plasmid from another bacterium which contained the antibiotic resistant gene. But if a question asks you, how did a population of antibiotic resistant bacteria develop? You have to say that we use too much antibiotics causing the sensitive bacteria to die and the resistant ones to survive and reproduce. And when the resistant one survives and reproduces, they pass down the resistant gene to the next generation and thus the new population of bacteria are now antibiotic resistant.